Do you know how to eat, but you just don't do it? Or do you know how not to eat, but you keep on doing that thing anyway? Hey, it's not your fault. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you what's going on and what you could do about it. But before I do, let me introduce myself. My name is Eve, and I love helping people heal, heal their relationship with food once and for all. So let's jump in. Let's talk about why you know to do something, but you don't do it, or why you know not to do something, but you see yourself do it anyway. And the reason this is, is because our thinking could be categorized into two categories. There's unconscious thinking and there's conscious thinking. And conscious thinking is a type of thinking that we do when we want to solve a problem, fix something, figure something out. It's analytical and it's logical. And it turns out only five to 25% of our thinking is actually conscious. In fact, 95 to 75% of our thinking is unconscious. And unconscious thinking is happening in the background. It's, it's um, automatic and it's emotional and it's going on all the time. And most of our thinking is unconscious, especially if we're scared or stressed out or too tired. So why does this matter? Well, because when you wanna heal your relationship with food, a lot of our eating is unconscious. In fact, many of us eat to go unconscious. So part of healing your relationship with food is learning how to make your unconscious conscious. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven different tips on how to do that. So let's jump in. Tip number one that could help you make your eating more conscious is start keeping a food journal. Writing down what you eat helps bring the unconscious to conscious because you're thinking about it and you're writing it down. However, if you have a long history of tracking your food and it feels like it's traumatizing or triggering for you to write foods down, don't do this tip. It's not for everybody all the time. However, if you think it'll be interesting and it would feel good to write down your food, this could be a very powerful thing in making your eating less unconscious and more conscious. Tip number two, and I have my tips written here so I don't leave anything out, is to practice mindful eating. Do what it, you can to make yourself more present during your eating. And I know there's a lot of talk about this out there and I wanna share with you how to go about doing this. One thing is get rid of the distractions. No computer, no phone, no Instagram, no book, anything rectangular sh shaped except for the table, you know, um, allowed while you're eating. You know, try to eat in a present way, maybe soft music, maybe light a candle like this. That could really help you get in the mood to eat more present. If you have a lot of thoughts that are distracting, take a moment, a few breaths to come back into your body so when you eat, you're more present. And that could be really powerful in making your eating more conscious. Tip number three is to plan your meals. Yeah, actually planning out your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, knowing when and sometimes even what you're having can make a big difference because this helps in a couple of ways. It helps because if you're eating in between your meal times, you could check in and ask yourself, hey, is this conscious or unconscious? It could be a trigger. Hey, I'm eating in between lunch and dinner. What is this about? And can help you determine for yourself, is this because I'm legitimately hungry or is this me going unconscious? And that could be really interesting. Also, planning meals and knowing that you have food coming could do a lot of work in healing diet trauma. If you have a long history restricting and dieting, knowing that you have a meal coming and knowing what it is could be powerful in helping in healing that. Tip number four is seek support. Whether you work with a dietitian like me who specializes in helping people heal their relationship with food, or if you're part of a group that talks about this stuff, it could be so powerful to talk about it, to process this stuff, and to get some tools in making your eating more conscious. Tip number five is notice what triggers you to go unconscious. What people, places, things, circumstances, or foods may trigger you to go unconscious. And on the same token, learn what helps you feel more conscious. Are there certain people, places, foods, situations that help you feel more relaxed and conscious while you're eating? Then tip number six is know what it feels like when you go unconscious, having that awareness of what it feels like in your body when you're triggered or when you're unconscious could be helpful as well as knowing when you are conscious and what that feels like. Does it feel foggy or, or like gloomy when you're unconscious or does it feel more crystal and clear when you are conscious? Notice what that feels like in your body so you could take appropriate action. And finally, tip number seven, and you know, I think this is my favorite tip, is be kind to yourself. Learning how to heal your relationship with food and become more conscious with your eating isn't easy. It takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing. 
So be kind with yourself, be patient with yourself as you take steps to become more aware of your eating. And so I'm here sending you so much love. And if you found this interesting or helpful, I invite you to subscribe, share this video. And um, thank you so much for watching. Happy eating, everybody. Bye. Bye.